So we've done manual delta bed leveling, we've done auto bed leveling. How about auto bed leveling on a delta? <laughs> Manually leveling a delta 3D printer can be challenging to say the least. And anything we can do to automate that process, I'm all for it. But auto calibration can kind of be tricky to set up as well. A lot of it depends on the size of your delta and the sensor that you use. So today I'm going to walk you through all the steps to get that set up. I'm going to be using the AnyCubic pulley version. We're going to install Marlin 1.1.9, get it configured, and I'm going to be using the magnetic sensor that AnyCubic offers as an add-on for your printer. So let's start by getting the hardware configured. So here's a look at the AnyCubic leveling sensor. It's basically just a micro switch, but it has a little magnet on it that will mount on this plate. And this plate mounts on the effector with the screws that hold the hot end on. It's kind of hard to see, but that little plate goes on these two screws right here. So that plate is on, and the sensor will just stick to it right like that. Here's a better look at that sensor. Now here's the reason why it can be kind of tricky to auto-calibrate a delta. Especially on a smaller delta where you don't have a lot of room to probe, it's really important for this sensor to be right underneath the nozzle. So even if it was off to the side just a little bit, that could cause the effector to tilt and you would get an inaccurate reading. So because it's removable, it can be right underneath this nozzle and that's going to give you the most accurate calibration. And if you don't want to use this configuration, another great option is just to create an arm that has a micro switch that you can temporarily connect on here, or if you want to go all out, you can install a servo that brings that arm down. Any sensor that can get you close to right underneath the nozzle is going to make this calibration go a lot smoother. Now we need to create a cable to hook up our sensor. This is a somewhat proprietary plug, but we should be able to use DuPont connectors to connect this up. We only need two wires because we just have to hook it up to the Z minimum end stop pins. And here's my cable. I just have a DuPont connector on both ends. I'm going to hook up the white wire to the red wire and the blue wire to the black wire. And on the board side, you want to go to the minimum Z end stop pins, and they are right here. We're going to put the white wire on this side, and then the blue wire will go in the center. And that should be all you have to connect. Now, as far as hardware goes, setting up that sensor, that should be all we have to do. But I am going to show you how to upgrade to Marlin 1.1.9 while I'm at it, because there's a great example configuration now for this printer. So, let's head to the computer. So I just downloaded a fresh version of Marlin 1.1.9. You head into the Marlin folder, Example Configurations, go into the Delta folder, go into AnyCubic, Castle, and we're going to copy these two configuration files. Now these configuration files are set up with variables, so you can select what sensor you're going to use, because there's a couple different versions of that AnyCubic sensor. But when they set this example configuration up, they really went the extra mile. So if you go into the Images folder, this will show you the difference in between those two probes. So these two probes, it looks like there's two different switches. We have the version 2 probe, and that's going to make a difference because your Z offset's going to be a little different. And I'll show you more on that in a second. So we've got the configuration files copied. We'll go back to the Marlin directory, and we'll paste them right here, and replace the files in the destination. Now we can open up the Marlin INO file. You will need the Arduino IDE for this. And we'll head to the configuration.h tab. Again, this example configuration makes things so much easier. So if you have the larger AnyCubic Costal Plus, you can uncomment this line. This is the standard pulley version, so we'll leave that alone. And here is where you define which probe you have. Zero, no probe, probe one, or probe version two. We have probe version two, so we'll change this to two. I do have the aluminum heated bed, so we'll change this to 1. And that should give us a complete configuration for this printer with auto bed leveling. And just to give you an idea of what those variables are setting, you can see that here in the offsets for that probe. The version 1 offset right here is quite a bit larger than the version 2. And something else that I found while making this video, the sensor that I'm using is not inverted, but it is set to inverted true in this firmware. So I'm going to have to change these to false. Zmin to false, Zmin probe end stop inverting to false. We're also going to change the minimum probe edge from 20 to 10. That pushes our probing area out a little further so that we can measure more of the bed. And there's one last thing that I want to adjust before we upload, and that's the delta height. 
Before you do auto calibration, if the delta height is too low, it won't bring the printer all the way down to the print bed to trigger that sensor. So I like to set this value to something that's a lot greater than the printer's actual size. By default, it's 320. I'm just going to make this 400 for now. After the calibration is complete, we're going to come back in here and fill out all these values anyway. So this is good for the first run. And that should be all we have to change for now. I'm going to go ahead and cable up to the printer USB. We'll go to Tools. We'll go to Board. For this printer, we're going to do the Mega 2560. 2560 processor, the COM port that your printer's on, and hit upload. The upload is done, and the first thing that I want to do on this printer before we start the calibration is to connect up via printer face, and I want to run an M502 to load the hard-coded defaults, and then an M500 to save it. This is going to get rid of anything that's currently in EEPROM on the printer that might get confusing. Now we can head to the LCD screen and start the calibration. So the first thing we probably want to do is do an auto home. So let's go into prepare and hit auto home. Now we can scroll all the way down to the bottom of the prepare menu and do delta calibration. We're going to run auto calibration. This is going to probe the bed multiple times and create a map. This is what's going to set the radius and the end stop offset of the delta. Now that the calibration is complete, we're just going to run a bed level. This is pretty much your standard G29. So you can go to prepare, bed leveling, level bed. Now that the level is complete, this is a great time to store everything in EEPROM. You can do that with an M500, or we can go to prepare, go all the way down to delta calibration, and hit store settings. Now we can remove the probe, and we can test a print. I slice this one layer test file so that we can test our delta calibration. We'll load that file up and do a test print. I'm kind of amazed, but that print is looking really good. Yeah, it's looking nice and even all the way around. We'll just go ahead and let this run. So this test print, not that great. There's a lot of gaps. There's some areas where it stuck too well, some areas where it didn't stick good enough. But given this surface, as battered as it is, there's a lot of nicks, it's pretty uneven. That's probably as good as it's going to get. But I want to try again. So I'm going to try this same calibration setup and this test print on a piece of glass. So the glass is on. Let's go ahead and run through our calibration steps again. The probe has been installed. I'm going to jump back into Prawn Face, load the defaults, save the defaults. We'll go to Prepare, Delta Calibration, Auto Calibration. And we'll let it run its sequence on our new piece of glass. The calibration is complete. We can go ahead and run our bed level. Prepare, bed leveling, level bed. The leveling is done. We can go ahead and remove the probe. Let's save that with an M500 command. And let's try that test print again. And the glass print is looking much more stable. I increased the Z offset with baby stepping roughly 0.2 of a millimeter. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and restart it and let it finish. Now that the calibration and the level's all done, I want to grab all the values that we just set with our calibration. So I'm going to do M503, and I'm going to copy all these values down here at the bottom. These values are what I'm going to enter permanently in Marlin, so I'll have these values just in case something happens to the EEPROM copy. So I'll just save those in Notepad++ for now. Let's go back into Marlin, and let's hard code some of these delta values that we saved in our Notepad. So let's change our end stop adjustments, X, we had negative 0.98, Y, we had negative 1.06, and Z was 0. Our diagonal rod length was 218. And for radius, I'm going to comment out this line and redefine another line. So I'm going to do define delta radius 97.61. Our delta height should now be 333.35. Our delta segments per second should stay 80. And our delta tower angles, x is 0 0.13, y is negative 0 0.56, and z is positive 0 0.44. And I'm also going to add that baby stepping that I did, trying to get the first layer right to the offset. And we'll just make it an even negative 17. That should be it. Now we can upload, and I'll restart that print. And a couple other things I wanted to mention, but not necessarily change. 
Sometimes this option is commented out. This is the option that enables you to edit software end stops from the LCD menu, and that's pretty handy to have. So if it's not turned on, go ahead and remove this comment. And this option is enabled in this config. Normally G28 will wipe out your leveling map, but if this is uncommented, it's going to leave that leveling map, and that's what you want in this configuration. And then in configuration underscore ADV, it's always handy to have baby stepping enabled, but with a delta, you can enable this feature. This will allow the baby stepping to control the Z probe offset. So you can adjust that first layer if you need to, and it won't affect your delta height. And here's our final result. So this is just some glass with some glue stick on it. And this is no way a perfect print, but it's much better than the first test print I did, and just as good as any manual bed leveling job I've ever done on this printer. And that is Delta Auto Calibration in Marlin 1.1.9. Now, if you've tried auto calibration before in previous versions of Marlin and it didn't go so well, definitely give 1.9 a try, especially now that they have all these different configuration examples for deltas, and the one for the AnyCubic Castle Delta is going to make your life so much easier. And for a sub $200 Delta that took about 20 minutes to level and calibrate and gets this result, I'm calling that a win. I hope you liked this video or you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.